the untouched southern Great Plains, for centuries subject to unpredictable weather, relentless wind, and recurrent drought, but in season the richest grazing land on earth. Then came the cattleman, overgrazing and scarring the lush plains grass that held the water in the soil. In 1887, the farmer came, heedlessly ripping away the protective cover of turf that kept the soil from blowing away in time of drought. The dangers of drought were learned, but soon forgotten. The times were good. New settlers came, impressed with the rains and bumper crops. The fertile soil, considered inexhaustible, was taken for granted. Thousands poured into the plains to grab what they could from the soil. Unknowingly, they were creating this area that in the 30s would be called the Dust Bowl. Its center, Dalhart, Texas. My father brought me to the, to, to the Panhandle in 1890. And in 1913, my brother and I bought this ranch. And for several years, we had a very fine condition. But the farmers came here in the 20s, long about, I'd say, about 27 or 28. They, and they began to buy this land and break it up and plant it into crop and corn. <laughs> All through the 20s, high-paying wheat was the goal. New, faster equipment joined the tractor. Expensive, but a boom was on, credit easy. Farmers and ranchers became gamblers, expanding on credit. More equipment, more land, to produce more wheat to pay the bills. As farms became mechanized wheat factories, non-resident suitcase farmers rushed in and out for quick killing carving out millions of acres of green pasture land, never minding the cost. The good weather, which seemed to go in 10-year cycles, held. The 20s were very good. Well, the dry weather started about 30, and, and then 31 and 32 it got worse, and some of these farmers had livestock. And they didn't have any place to graze these cattle much, and they turned them on these fields. And their little old stuff got about that high, they'd pull it up and eat it. And that left the land bare. And in 1933, it was pretty bad. And uh, about 34, it got real bad. The drought lasted eight years. greed and years of careless cultivation now took their toll. The uncovered earth had given all it had to give. It could give no more. As the added ordeal of depression tumbled the price of wheat, the land, mistreated, parched by drought, was pulverized to produce still more wheat. A futile race with the creditor, creating only dust, ready to blow. In the spring of 1934, the winds caught up the broken soil, and a plague of dust descended upon those who had treated the land with ignorance and contempt. of dust billowed up to 15,000 feet in the air, shutting off the sun, eventually turning day into night.
sand had to be shoveled from railroad tracks before trains could pass. Airplanes were grounded, and a sense of impending doom permeated the cities of the plain, turned into darkness at midday. country was blowing away, withering vegetation from millions of acres of farmlands, choking the air so that it was painful to breathe without a damp cloth over nose and mouth. This was only the beginning. For those on the southern plains, dust would become a way of life, their land the dust bowl. during the terrible Dust Bowl days. The, la the worst storm that I can remember was the last big duster that rolled in. We stopped by the side of the road and waited until we could see the edge of the road, which was I don't know how long. It seemed like a lifetime. We drove on home, and we found out when we got out, we were so short on oxygen, we could hardly stand up. And when we got in the house and turned on the light, I told my husband, I said, Bandit, you can take off your mask now. The sheriff won't be out tonight. He says, maybe you better take off yours. So when we got finally cleaned up and started the bed, he dropped his clothes. The only time in all of our married life that he didn't pick them up. 